an Azerbaijani media channel published this video of a convoy of trucks covered with tarpaulin sheets moving towards Armenia from Iran. This has enraged Azerbaijan against India. But why? According to Azerbaijani media reports, the trucks were carrying some weapon system to Armenia that were supposedly sent from India. The cargo apparently reached the Iranian port of Bandar Abbas from India. From there it moved towards Armenia via the Nurdus Agarak border crossing. Azerbaijan is fuming, so much so that Hikmet Hajiyev, the foreign policy advisor to the president of Azerbaijan, called on the Indian ambassador to the country, Sridharan Madhusudanan, to register his protest. Armenia and Azerbaijan are locked in a conflict. But how does India come into picture in all this? Let's find out. Hello guys, I am Saurav and welcome to The Ark. Before going into the details about how India got involved in all this, we need to go back in time to understand why is this development significant and its relevance with respect to the larger geopolitical games being played. Take a look at the map. Azerbaijan and Armenia are both former Soviet republics. The Nagorno-Karabakh region, predominantly populated by the ethnic Armenians, was established after the fall of Russian Empire in 1918. Later when Soviet Republic was formed, the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast was formed in 1921 within Soviet Azerbaijan. The Nagorno-Karabakh region wanted to merge with Armenia, but that never happened and the ethnic tensions kept simmering. Armenia and Azerbaijan both claim sovereignty over the Nagorno-Karabakh region. When the dissolution of the Soviet Republic started, ethnic tensions reached their peak and the first violent conflict started in 1988. In 1991, the Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh declared their independence. As the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh or the Republic of Artsakh with the intention of reunifying with newly independent Armenia. It was rejected by the newly independent Azerbaijan and a full-scale war broke out with Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh on one side and Azerbaijan on the other. The ethnic conflict that led to the Nagorno-Karabakh war resulted in ethnic cleansing of Armenians from Azerbaijan and Azerbaijanis from Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh. Russia then brokered a ceasefire between the two sides in 1994. And this was the position after the 1994 ceasefire agreement. Up until 2016, there was relative peace in the region, barring a few violent clashes. A large-scale conflict erupted in 2016 with tanks, helicopters, drones being used in such a high scale for the first time, leaving hundreds of dead on both sides. The second Nagorno-Karabakh war started on 27 September 2020. The conflict saw use of all kinds of weaponry, starting from heavy artillery, helicopters, missiles, drones, etc. The conflict saw extensive use of drones, especially by the Azerbaijani side. Azerbaijan deployed Turkish Bayraktar TB2 drones and Israeli loitering munitions to destroy tanks and military targets of Armenia in Nagorno-Karabakh. Armenia was convincingly defeated in the war and finally a ceasefire agreement was signed on 19 November 2020 after the capture of Susha city in Nagorno-Karabakh by Azerbaijan. After the ceasefire, this is the position currently held by all the sides. In August 2021, Azerbaijani soldiers blocked a highway in Armenia's southern region of Sunik. If you see the map, this highway starting from Goris in the north to Kapan in the south as you can see, a part of the highway passes through Azerbaijan. It was blocked near the village of Dabit Bak by the Azerbaijani soldiers. Things took a turn for the worse when Azerbaijan mounted a large-scale attack on Armenia in September 2022. On 12th December 2022, Azerbaijan blocked the Lachin Corridor, which is the only road connecting Artsakh to Armenia and to the outside world. The 5-kilometer-wide Lachin Corridor which is often described as the lifeline of Nagorno-Karabakh, lies in Azerbaijan territory, but it was under the control of Russian peacekeeping forces as a condition in the 2020 ceasefire agreement. But Azerbaijan built a checkpoint at the Hakari Bridge 
in April 2023 and created a blockade in violation of the ceasefire agreement 2020. The blockade has created a humanitarian crisis as the landlocked Nagorno-Karabakh region has access to Armenia only through this corridor. Around 120,000 Armenian residents of Nagorno-Karabakh are facing shortage of food, medicines, fuel and other essentials. The Azerbaijan side says the Lachin corridor was being used to fuel separatism in Artsakh and that's why it would remain blocked. Any shipment into Artsakh can go through the alternate Agadham Khan Kandi route. The blockade has been condemned by many countries, but there has not been any progress with respect to opening of the corridor as of yet. As can be seen here on the map, this is the current position held by either side. Azerbaijan now controls the area adjacent to Nagorno-Karabakh that Armenian forces had held since the first war between the countries ended in 1994, as well as a substantial part of Nagorno-Karabakh itself. Azerbaijan's belligerence has resulted in multiple incursions and military presence within Armenia proper that is not related to Nagorno-Karabakh. Unfortunately, for the people of Nagorno-Karabakh, it seems there is not much hope left. There have been multiple negotiations and peace talks between either side, mediated by Russia, the EU and France. The Prime Minister of Armenia, Nikol Pashchian, said that he was prepared to acknowledge Azerbaijan's sovereignty over the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region, provided Azerbaijan recognizes the territorial integrity of Armenia. Azerbaijan is in the Kazakhstan of 29,640 km, and in Kazakhstan is in the Kazakhstan of 29,640 km. about its territorial integrity. But where does India feature in all this? What has the conflict got to do with India that is more than 3000 km away? Let's find out. As far as India-Armenia foreign relations are concerned, India was among one of the early nations to recognize Armenia as an independent nation in 1991. The two countries have historical ties and bilateral relations are growing in recent years. In October 2021, India's external affairs minister S Jay Shankar became the first Indian foreign minister to visit Armenia since the two countries established diplomatic relations in 1992. Indian defense minister Rajnath Singh and his Armenian counterpart Suren Papikyan met on the sidelines of the Defence Expo 2022 at Gandhinagar to expand defence cooperation between the two countries. Reports suggest that Armenia has been interested in buying more defence equipment from India. starting from drones, artillery systems, ammunition and surface to air missiles. Before going into the specifics of the weapon systems Armenia has purchased or intends to purchase from India, we need to look at this defense cooperation from another angle. That is the Azerbaijan, Turkey, Pakistan axis. The three countries have surprisingly shown some bonhomie towards each other in recent times. signing agreements to deepen security, economic and diplomatic cooperation. The bilateral relation between Azerbaijan and Turkey and Pakistan and Turkey is not new, but this trilateral axis is a recent phenomenon. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Turkey and Pakistan were the first countries to recognize Azerbaijan as an independent nation. Incidentally, Pakistan is the only country in the world that does not recognize Armenia's independence. Turkey is now Pakistan's top 3 arms supplying countries. Pakistan has purchased warships, drones and other defense equipment from Turkey and defense cooperation between the two countries has been growing over the years. On the Azerbaijan Turkey front, as per reports, Azerbaijan has procured weapons worth more than 75 million dollars from Turkey in recent times. It is now well known that Turkey's drones effectively changed the course of 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh war in favor of Azerbaijan and Pakistan too played a part in this conflict by supplying arms to Baku. Their cooperation is not limited only to defense equipment but on the diplomatic front they support each other's stand 
on international disputes like Pakistan and Turkey support Azerbaijan stand on Armenia and Nagorno Karabakh Azerbaijan and Pakistan support Turkey's position on Cyprus and Turkey and Azerbaijan support Pakistan's position on Kashmir going against India this trilateral defense cooperation and joint military drills have ruffled some feathers in Iran too that has openly voiced its concerns against this grouping Iran has cordial relations with both Armenia and India so it's natural that Iran would play a vital role in this new India Armenia Iran axis with its borders connecting Armenia and India developing ports and other infrastructure in Iran India also plans to connect Iran's Chabahar port to Russia and Europe with the international north south transport corridor in which Armenia can also play a vital role I have discussed INSTC in detail in a previous video do check it out Now as far as defense equipment are concerned in May 2020 India agreed to supply four Swati weapon locating radars developed by DRDO for a price of 40 million dollars India and Armenia signed another 245 million dollars worth of arms deals that includes India sending missiles and other offensive and defensive systems exact details of which have not been made public but sources suggest armenian forces have likely shot the pinaka multi barrel rocket launchers and konkur sam anti tank guided missiles among other things armenia purchased 155 mm artillery gun platforms worth 155.5 million dollars from the indian company bharat forge limited which is a part of the kalyani group so what exactly was delivered to armenia via iran as per the caliber website that put out this video sources suggest it could be the pinaka multi barrel rocket launchers the pinaka system working in conjunction with swati can prove to be very effective in the battlefield which is why baku is seething but azerbaijan needs to understand one thing here if they can procure weapons from turkey and pakistan then what is wrong with armenia buying weapons for its defense from india why this double standard as far as selling arms to another country is concerned india will do whatever is in its own interest but the more important question is will india offer more cutting edge defense equipment like attack helicopters surface to air missiles like akash and brahmos to armenia only time will tell thanks for watching i hope to see you soon with a new video thank you